Good afternoon, I'm Scott Alexander from Legal Island, as you can see. Uh, I'm joined today by Dr Esther McGuinness, who's the Senior Law Lecturer and looks after the course, the Postgraduate Certificate in Northern Ireland Employment Law Practice. Uh, I also have Catherine McKinney here, who was a student uh, last year, and we have Dylan Lachlan, who's disappeared somewhere, but he is here. Uh, he just doesn't have a camera. He said some difficulties connecting with the camera today, and it's the four of us. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's 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 a webinar really about the postgraduate certificate in employment law and practice that you can see, and we are going online. Uh, for the last four years, we've been um, in York Street um, in UU's um, headquarters there, uh, and it involved practical uh, trips, for instance, so there'd be a trip to the tribunal office to see uh, uh, or to take part in a mock uh, tribunal and so on. And then there would be mock uh, mediation tours of the LRA as well as in-class um, lectures. So to put it into context, you can see in front of you uh, the, the modules that we have. There are two semesters. We'll come to those in a minute. But in semester one, if you were to do the full program, uh, in week one, which starts on the 22nd of September, and it runs through to uh, the beginning of December. We do two uh, sessions there. You'll see them. There's one on ADR, and after six weeks, we move into the tribunal uh, um, issues, and that ends with a mock um, tribunal in front of the president of the Northern Ireland uh, Industrial and Employment Tribunals. So those happen between two and three, and those are the live sessions that you would have. And there would be a webinar a bit like this, okay, with one of the guest lecturers. And you can see if we're doing those ones there, there's a lot of people from the Labour Relations Agency. Uh, and if you're from the Republic, that's the equivalent of the WRC, so uh, the Workplace Relations Commission. And you'll see in the second uh, half of that semester, we've got Jennifer Nape from um, the the uh, Ulster University, and we have um, Paul Gillen, who's from Pinsent Masons, and he's also the uh, visiting professor there. And you'll see right at the end, we have a mock CMD and feedback uh, with Eileen McBride, who's the president of tribunals. So if you were to do the full uh, course, you would do that on a Tuesday afternoon, starting at the beginning of September. And then uh, following that, you would have another session, which would be employment law. And you'll see we start off fairly gently with Esther and me at the beginning, and then we move on. Mark McAllister, many of you I'm sure will know, looking at the formation of the contract. Then we bring in uh, um, Adrian Brock, who's uh, um, head of employment at Elliot Duffy Garrett. She's looking at what is protected, in, uh, or who is protected rather, and the modern employment relationships, so the difference between worker, employee, and so on. Uh, that's going before the Supreme Court this week. And then we bring in Tunes, we've got Arthur Cox, Jones Cassidy, Brett, do a number of discrimination um, issues uh, that we do up right up until the end and the last one that we have, which is going to be, if we move along a little bit there, Rolanda, and you'll see it ends up with work-life balance and family-friendly rights. Again, uh, those are likely to be changing uh, with bereavement leave coming in uh, later on this year, I'm sure, into Northern Ireland. So the, the religious beliefs you've got there, bullying, harassment uh, comes in, and the other uh, disability concepts and so on that are coming through. So that would be term one. Uh, and in term two, if we scroll up a little bit there, semester two, uh, we start at the end of January, and we bring in more uh, um, senior partners in law firms. You can see we start off with Rachel Penny, who's in Carson McDowell, and then we've got um, our partner there, uh, Orlo O'Neill, is looking at social media. Uh, we look at discipline with Louise McAloon, we have Seamus McGranahan. If you listen to our first Friday of the month, we have a webinar with Seamus on any employment uh, questions that you may wish. Then we bring in Lisa Bryson, who's a partner with Evershed Sutherland, uh, and Esther's in there too. And then there's a few from Gareth Walls, who's partnered with ANL Goodbody, which I think is the biggest law firm in Ireland. Um, they're very, very big. They're uh, down by the Liffey there uh, in, in Dublin, and they're also a big firm and growing firm in Northern Ireland. And then we bring in Pinsons, again, with Laura Gillespie looking at data protection. We have Chupi redundancy, uh, trade union issues with Mark, and then we finish with um, developments and things that we expect to see. Um, 
uh, and the last term that we had, it arose out of COVID. So those are the kind of things you do. Esther will come in in the second part of this presentation and we'll show you that you can break it up, you can do it in different chunks if you don't have time to do it all. We're acutely aware that um, people that do this are, are mainly um, working uh, and, 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 and can't attend uh, full time and you've got to balance all your, your, your family responsibilities and so on, um, uh, and work responsibilities. So we're, we're aware of that, and you can do it as a modular basis. But as far as I'm concerned, that's what it is. The, the, the whole point behind this, when Esther and I and Mark McAllister got together to create it, was to make sure that it covered both parts. So you cover employment law, but you also cover the practice of employment law and the practicalities of it and how it's implemented. So that's the the, the kind of things that we've been we're concerned about. We think it's a fantastic course. I don't think you would find so many law partners uh, and uh, practitioners and experts on any other um, course anywhere in the UK or Ireland. Um, but that, we think it's good, and we would tell you that. But if we could maybe hear from uh, Catherine uh, McKinney. Catherine, you're uh, in HR, but you did this course last year. Um, I have no idea what you're going to say, by the way, so I hope it's good. And the people listening are going to get some positive things out of there. But maybe if you could um, run through these questions. Why did you choose it? How was the course uh, in general? What was the online things like when uh, you moved to the COVID? Because we had a closed down period in the second semester. And how have you used it? So if you can cover those key points for the listeners, that would be great. OK. Well, um, I work in a local beef manufacturer uh, as an HR officer. Um, so I would experience a lot of um, employment, law, employment law issues um, on a daily basis. Um, so I decided to apply to the course because I wanted to augment my existing employment law knowledge. I thought I knew uh, a lot, but I was mistaken. <laughs> I've learned so much this year. Um, I mean, initially I was a bit nervous about returning to study because I work full time. Um, and I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but um, as well as that, as well, I was moving from like a totally different discipline. Like I had done my previous studies in business, and then this was law, so I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. But um, the lecturers really helped to ease us back into study, and they were always approachable for any kind of issues that we had. And any feedback on coursework um, was very supportive in nature and helpful. Um, I mean, the students themselves, like, uh, they're a real mixed bag, um, HR, academic backgrounds, legal backgrounds, so it was really useful to mix with the likes of different students. Um, and the classes themselves, um, really, really useful. The content is so applicable to what you do on a daily basis, uh, particularly in HR. Um, at the end of lectures, we were, always, we were always given the opportunity to ask any questions that we we had any burning questions and anything that would be relevant to our own workplaces that we may be dealing with. Um, of course, whenever COVID hit, um, everything moved online, but everything was readily available. Um, everything was recorded and on Blackboard. Um, I, very, I was able to very easily download everything, and I certainly have downloaded everything, and I still use all the content that um, was made available to us on a daily basis. Um, particularly for any kind of relevant uh, issues that I encounter in work. Um, so I cannot stress how much these materials um, really helped, um, certainly in regards to disciplinary and grievance situations that I encounter. And the course is really well structured and relevant. Um, so I'm definitely, I'm definitely more comfortable and knowledgeable in employment law thanks to the course. So, uh, so much so that I, I hope to apply in September and do the Masters. Well, there we go. We will hear more about the Masters uh, in a moment from Esther, but thank you very much, uh, Catherine. You mentioned questions, so if anyone listening has questions, there's a little question box there. You send them in and we'll deal with them after Esther's given a little bit of a presentation. I should have pointed out that because we're going online, and Catherine mentioned the online provision there, what we're going to be doing is recording a session. So if you take this course uh, before each week, you will be sent a video uh, with a presentation, or it might be a mock mediation, for instance, uh, and that will be your homework. That will be the revision. And then there'll be a live session where we'll be looking at a practical exercise plus Q&A and so on. And all of those are going to be recorded, including the Q&A. 
So the flexibility that you'll have, uh, you know, if you can't attend a live session, you'll be able to watch them back afterwards. You can, if you're coming up to your exams, because at the end of each um, uh, each one of those modules, there's an exam that, that is uh, set by uh, Esther, and she'll be dealing with those. So um, you'll be able, you'll have all those materials as well as the written materials and all the uh, additional papers and so on. Everything's going to be video, so you can watch back as part of the course as well. Um, Dylan, Dylan, are you there? And could you maybe say the same thing? How, you, why, you, why you chose the course? Um, how was it? Um, the online thing, I think we've maybe covered. Uh, but if you find anything different, let us know. And how have you used it? And what are you doing with your life? Well, hello everyone. So I would actively manage HR policies and procedures within businesses and give advice to claimants and respondents in relation to proceedings in the tribunal. Um, so it was important for me then to have the, the legal knowledge and information sort of to back up that advice um, and sort of it underpinned then how I operated in terms of the the knowledge moving forward. Um, in the first instance, I did the, the PG cert um, and because it was so good, then I applied for the the Masters in Employment Law, which was absolutely fantastic. The Both courses were absolutely excellent. The industry experts and the the knowledge um, that they brought into every class, um, you can put a value on that. Um, the sort of the setup of it, the, the before you get to the tribunal, the resolution um, with the team. We're kind of losing you a wee bit there, uh, Dylan. Thank you for your. your... Uh, it was excellent. And then going into the tribunal, how it operates um, is again very useful. And then you have the legal underpinning of that, um, keeping you right in terms of your advice and how you're operating again. Um, I was sort of apprehensive before I joined the course. Can you hear me okay now? Uh, well, we, we, we lost you there, but you're sounding good now. So if you have anything else to add, uh, add away there, Dylan. Hello. Can you hear me okay now? No, as soon as you start speaking, it disappears. The only bit that's really, really good is when you say, can I hear you now? Uh, everything else <laughs> Hello. That's not what happens, folks, on the ones that we record, okay? Let's go. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. We can hear you okay. Try speaking. Oh. So um, I was sort of apprehensive. <laughs> no, I'll try it's, again. It's not gonna, it's not, it's not right. gonna work that so, way. Yeah, I was apprehensive out. before I joined the course because I was worried that it would affect my work um, and I wouldn't have the time. Okay. That's, that's not working. Dylan, Dylan we're going to um, maybe ask you not to speak anymore. Um, uh, you might be able to come back at the end or we'll maybe get a, a, a written response of it. I think you got the the, um, the gist of it there anyway, if you're listening, uh, folks, that, that um, he found it great. He found it so good that he went on to do the Masters and he's found it very practical in his job advising claimants and respondents. Uh, in tribunals and so on. So you can see it, it links in there. The the the, the range uh, of student goes from lawyers to HR to consultants to everybody. I'm sure Esther could say more about that. But I'm going to I'm going to bring in uh, Dr. Esther McGuinness. Esther, you coordinate this course. You 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 do all the practical stuff. You provide a lot of the pastoral care for students. You set the exams. You used to meet and greet and set up everything for the lecturers when they turned up in uh, York Street uh, during the in-person events. Uh, there wouldn't be a course without you. So uh, we're going to hand it over to you now uh, and take people through the different ways that the course would run and different aspects that you see uh, for the next bit. If anyone, if you have any questions, send the questions in uh, and um, um, we'll deal with them once Esther's finished her little presentation. It won't take too long. Okay. You okay. Thank you, Scott, and thank you everyone who's joined um, today. I appreciate you doing so. I know that whether you're working from work or working at home, it's difficult to find the time. And that was the basis really upon which we established uh, this PG Cert, Scott and Mark and myself. Um, all three of us come from a background where we have worked in an employment law environment 
uh, either in an advice or representation basis for, for many, many years, uh, more years than I would care to calculate as one, to be honest. Um, so the basis of this PG cert is really based on the practicalities. What do employers need to know? What do individual workers at trade unions need to know? What does business need to know as a whole? And more than that, how it brings an understanding of how tribunals function and the amount of detail that you need to know either as an employer or as an employee or an organization. So that was really important to us when we established this course. Um, and the first course that we established was the PG Cert in Employment Law and Practice. And I have to say that like all university courses, it has to be offered in a part-time basis as well as a full-time basis. But we really looked at this from the point of view of running a full-time course and how that would fit in to people's working day. So as Scott said, we are acutely aware um, that people are, are working. Coming back to study is a really daunting prospect. How are you going to fit it in? It's a long time since you studied. Maybe it's not. You know, what's the coursework going to be like? What's the writing component? Um, and we took all of these things into consideration when we devised this course. So we, we looked at what we felt people needed. And then we looked at how we were going to test that. So what we've done is we run four modules, as indicated there. The PG cert is worth cre uh, 60 credit points in total. So you do two modules um, that are 12 weeks in duration, and those are employment law and employment compliance. And you do two six week modules which are worth 10 credit point modules, and that's uh, alternative dispute resolution that's delivered by the LRA, and tribunal representation that is delivered um, by my colleague in the law clinic, um, who's also a barrister, and by um, Professor Paul Gillen from Pinsent Masons, and by the president of the employment tribunals, Eileen McBride, who oversees the running of a mock case management discussion. So I've said there in that slide that it's 100% coursework assessed. So this is what we do. We uh, create an employment law trial bundle. So for any of you that have worked uh, in HR or employment law, you'll know that when you're putting a case together, you're working on different aspects. We bring all of those aspects together. So you're given an ET1 and an ET3 uh, response form. Oh, we seem to have uh, lost Esther there for a minute. Uh, um, I'll maybe continue with what she was going to say. She's maybe chatting away in the background there. This 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 hasn't happened uh, when we were doing the presentations, uh, but a, a, a lot of it does depend, obviously, on where um, how strong the Wi-Fi is, uh, where you're broadcasting from. It's clearly uh, a lot stronger in deepest, darkest County Armagh than it is over in Belfast, uh, where Esther is, and indeed where Dylan. I think is as well. So um, I'll, I'll maybe take over the slides, seeing as Esther seems to have disappeared at the moment. Um, it's 100% coursework, as she said. What you do is you get the um, ET1, which is the Employment Tribunal uh, 1 form, which is the claim form, and the um, uh, response form, which is the ET3. And you'll also get an early conciliation um, form here as well, because the process has changed uh, in Northern Ireland. We now have early conciliation where uh, claimants have to go through the Labour Relations Agency before they're allowed into an Industrial Affair Employment Tribunal. So we cover up uh, or we, we, we deal with the actual forms and that's what it's based around. We, we deal with things that are practical. We uh, issue um, documents and expect you to try and work them through. And at the end of it, the case management discussion, which is CMD, if you haven't been to one, is where you look at trying to organise a, a, a tribunal a hearing uh, in advance, and they look at all the, the, the details and structures around that. Uh, the course cost, nothing to do with Legal Island, um, is uh, £4,250. Uh, and 
there are loans available if you can't afford that. And I believe there are loans for even doing it part time. So although the course is effectively a Tuesday afternoon, uh, although you can do it in your own time because of the, the, the recorded aspects, uh, that's called full time in university uh, language. Uh, and part time means that you do different modules. So you might just do the ones uh, on alternative dispute resolution and tribunals, uh, or you might oh. just do the one on employment law. Is this Esther trying to come back in? Uh, yeah. Okay. Are Did you, you okay, Esther? I'm not sure what's happening here. Can you hear Esther? Yeah, Esther. You I, can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Why don't you talk? You've got you've got two windows open. I've got two windows open. I'm not so, sure yeah. how that happened. Okay, well, you 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 you, you take over you if you want. Over if you want right. Okay. Um. So sorry. The the purpose for having the trial bundle is to run a is to run a case from start to case to case management discussion um level in what we consider to be real time. So. In the ADR module that the Labour Relations Agency uh, deliver, you do a mock conciliation and you reflect on that. In the tribunal representation module, we show you how to prepare a schedule of loss and a draft legal facts and issues document. And the rationale for that is to help individuals who are working on employment cases to, to realise um, amounts or figures or what's involved in the settlement process to bring a case to a settlement before it proceeds to full hearing to try and avoid that. Um, and then also through the legal facts and issues document to identify, you know, the key issues in this case, the, the key heads of claim that an individual might proceed to a tribunal with and that a respondent needs to address in order to rebut the claims. You're then in the employment law module asked to provide an opinion from whatever perspective you're coming from, whether that's HR, legal, advisory, trade unions, you're asked to choose either the claimant or the respondent to represent, and you're asked to provide a legal opinion um, based on case law and relevant legislation. I should say that I appreciate that that appears daunting. Um, Catherine and Dylan might be able to say something in that towards the end, but um, really and truly, you're given very detailed examplars for everything. We don't leave you on your own to kind of work it out. You're taken through this information and you're shown how to do it. So we support you. Um, and I wouldn't even say we support you as much as possible. We really guide you through this process, the aim of it is to make you better at what you do by the end and to leave you with a set of notes at the end from this course that you can use as go-to reference tools. And that's really and truly the rationale. Um, in the second semester, you study employment compliance and that is also based on a, on a scenario in which you're asked to provide a letter of advice. So. Uh, not the same as the trial bundle, but similar in terms of what you're asked to do. So it's 100% coursework assessed. Uh, as I say, you're given the trial bundle at the start of the semester, at the start of the modules, and that would not be due to be submitted um, until January. So uh, you're given the trial bundle in September um, and you don't submit coursework for a lot of that until January. For employment compliance, you get your coursework at the start, so you get that at the end of January, and you don't submit that coursework until May. So we try and nurture people through this process, and that's why a lot of people uh, are able to complete it on a full-time basis, because they can fit it in around their work and because we do provide so much support. Um, if you really can't do it on a full-time basis, there is a part-time option. Um, and in that, you would study uh, employment law and ADR in semester one, and then you study the other modules, or sorry, 
in, in, in you study employment law in semester one and employment compliance in semester two. And then the second year in the first semester, you come back and you finish ADR and um, tribunal representation. Um, I know that you probably have more questions around that, um, but my email address is on the slide. Um, rather than ring me, um, because I run a pro bono unit that's really busy, uh, my advice is that you email me if you have any specific questions. Um, so that's the PG Cert Employment Law and Practice. Uh, Roland, if you can hear me, if you could go on to the LLM uh, slides now, thank you. So the LLM Employment Law and Practice was created then because um, lots of students who finished the PG Cert said, can we have something more, please? Um, and can we have something more locally? So. The Employment Law Masters was, was really established again around the needs of students and the demands in their time. It can be taken over one year, just over one year for Masters or two years part-time. Um, it's 180 credits. Some students like Dylan, um, who you heard from earlier, choose to do the PG Cert first and then come back and finish off the remaining modules. Um, like the PG Cert, there are student loans available um, for this course as well. Um, and I'll just give you a breakdown then of, of some of the modules involved. Rolanda, if you could move on to the second slide in that or the third slide in that. Okay. Um, so if you opt to do the employment uh, law masters and you think it's too much, you can opt just to do um, the four modules in the PG Cert and exit with the PG Cert at the end of that time. Some students do that and that's that's fine. Um, if you choose to do the Masters um, on a part-time basis, you need to undertake modules worth 45 credit points in each semester. So, um, I understand that we're going to make these slides available to you. So all I would say about that is that um, the compulsory modules are set out there in semester one, and that's employment law, ADR and tribunal representation. And if we could move on to the next module, uh, sorry, next slide, Rolanda. These are the optional modules um, for semester one. So you look at those, you decide what you're most interested in, uh, which fits in, at best uh, to your time, and you opt for the ones that appeal to you most. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, Rolanda. So in semester two, those are the compulsory modules, employment compliance and tribunal representation. And then the next slide shows the optional modules. Um, there is another slide for semester two, Rolanda. So this module in particular, um, some students who undertake the PG Cert and don't feel that they're ready to um, complete the Masters opt to do this module as a standalone module. And the reason why they do that is because um, if you want to do it that way, you can do it and receive a separate qualification as a mediator. Um, that's an OCN accredited module and it's delivered by Mediation NI in their offices on University Road in Belfast and that's delivered between 9 and 5 on a Wednesday. Um, I have to say about that course that I, I qualified with Mediation NI some years ago and it was one of the best courses I've ever done, apart from the Legal Island courses, of course. Um, but it's a really good course and they are very good at keeping in contact with those who qualify through them. And they're very good at acting as a point of contact afterwards um, in terms of debriefing their mediators and providing that service um, and also providing them with work if that's your option. So some students complete the PG Cert and come back and do this module as a standalone additional qualification and then opt to do the remaining modules in the in the masters and that is really how these programs are designed so you can pick up on them when when it suits you and it fits in with your life 
Um, and the beauty, of course, about um, the online nature of the course in September is that certainly for the PG Cert, all of the modules are online. But for those elements that cross over with the Masters and with the Masters modules being delivered in semester one, all of those will be online in semester one. So it means that even if you can't attend the lectures in person, um, you will be sent the link. The, the link will be on the, the student portal for the course and you can download that and save it for another time and download that indeed and save it as a reference tool um, for future reference. So it, it really does we really have tried to to understand what the needs of the students will be um, who work and you're trying to balance many many things as well as returning um, to study um, if you could move on to the next slide Rolanda please okay so semester three really then is when you do your dissertation um, it's likely that I will oversee your dissertation if it's an employment law one if it's a commercial law one um, then that will be one of my other colleagues. Um, if you do the, if you undertake the masters on a part-time basis, um, you do uh, half of that in year one, and that's really about refining your research proposal and your research area, and you do get a lot of assistance with that. And then um, you then proceed into year two, where you do your writing up. If you do it full time, you would undertake your dissertation module from May until the start of September. So you really do have a lot of time in which you can research and develop that proposal. And you don't do it on your own. Uh, you will do it with me as supervisor, or one of my colleagues. And we do advise you and assist you in honing in in that particular area that you want to look at, advise you in reading, um, direct your research so that it is your work, but um, it is a piece of work that that you can stand over. You're not writing it for me, you're writing it for an external examiner, so um, you need to think about your audience. Uh, some of our students, I should say, also complete their work, um, also complete their dissertations um, alongside me and an organisation within the university called The Science Shop who um, work with community partners. So for instance, if you worked with an NGO or you were interested in completing an employment law dissertation in an area in relation to employment law and access to justice, for instance, tribunals, um, legal aid, uh, you would work with me and my colleague in the science shop to develop a a dissertation project uh, alongside a community partner that would be publishable and that would be used by them as a platform for further research. So there is that option as well. I appreciate this is a, a lot to take in and I'm doing a lot of talking at you at the minute. So I'm almost finished. Uh, Rolanda, we could move on to the next. Okay, so if that that's it really. Uh, if you have any other queries, um, my advice is to contact me via email rather than, than phone. I run a, a very busy pro bono unit, so um, you may not always get through. Um, and the link is there if you want to find out more about the courses. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Rolanda. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much, you very uh, much. Esther. Um, oh, I'm getting a feedback move if you mute while I'm on. Um, uh, that would be grand. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, Catherine's still there, but if you want to come back, that would be fine, just to finish up. We've only had a, a, a two or three questions coming in. Is it completely online? Well, as you've just heard, the um, certainly the PG cert uh, part of it is going to be online all year. We don't anticipate having any uh, in-person mm -hmm. Um, sessions this year, but the benefit of that is that you can record them uh, uh, without interference, uh, and you can you can listen back to them all. So you get all those kind of things. Is it 100% coursework? It is for the PG cert. Obviously, there's dissertations if you move on to the masters, uh, and if you do the PG cert, this is maybe one for you, uh, Esther. If you do the PG cert, how many modules do you need to do to complete? Hold on. 
to complete the LLM. So um, I suppose that's the extra parts. Uh, Esther, if you want to come back in and I'll mute myself. Um, it's the additional parts. If you go in to do the PG cert first, what's the additional parts you get as a, uh, if you do the... Um... Okay, so the PG cert is worth 60 credit points and the master's is worth 180 credit points and the dissertation is worth 60 of those credit points. So um, the modules that you choose, so say you do your, your PG cert modules, which are compulsory and are the core of the master's anyway, um, so that's 60 credit points. Your dissertation is 60 credit points, that's 120 points. You then choose to do um, other modules which will amount to another 60 credit points. So that might be, for instance, the mediation module, which is 30 credit points, and then another module, say, in equality law, for instance, or two um, shorter modules that are worth 10 credit points each, such as um, commercial ADR and derivatives, if you're interested in the financial aspects of it. So really and truly, when you're doing your master's, it's worth 180 credit points. 60 of those are the four modules of the PG cert. Another 60 is your dissertation. And the other 60 modules are made up from optional modules, which are on these slides and which you choose to do um, based on your own interest. Unmute myself. Uh, maybe if you mute yourself there, uh, Esther. The next one here, if it's classroom based in semester two, are these likely to be recorded? They won't be classroom based in semester two. We're going to um, have it recorded all the way through. There may be an element of mediation which is going to be classroom based, and that'll have to be uh, um, dealt with through mediation NI and Ulster University. It's nothing to do with Legal Island, uh, of course. You you can do online mediation and done courses on them, but um, it's it's much better in person. But then at the moment, people are doing online mediation. Uh, can you ask Catherine? I can indeed. Roughly how much additional time was required for coursework? How many hours per week approximately? Um, well, personally, I did a lot of my coursework at the weekend. Um, I know a number of my classmates maybe left it to the last minute. So it is, hesitantly, I say, um, you can do it in the last couple of days beforehand, but if you want, if you really want to get better marks, you're probably better starting like right away. Like I siphoned away a number of hours at the weekend, so I maybe spent like maybe four hours and like on a Saturday morning starting to do it. Um, so on the weeks up to it, then I was pretty much finished. Um, so it is, it is definitely doable. You can definitely do it just a couple of hours a week. Okay, it's 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 tough. You've got a. Uh, it's not an easy course when you're being asked to give opinions, uh, and and so on. But it is based on coursework. So if you've been to the lessons, it makes it a lot easier. Um, in fact, if you have the the uh, the coursework on, on the first day when I was there, I used to take the classes through it and say, you know, you'll be looking at this, you'll be looking for that, you'll be looking for the next thing, um, or Esther will be uh, type of stuff. So you get a few. As, as Esther said, the point we don't want anyone failing. But it's not a Bible, so but you are helped, I think, Catherine, all the way through with with things. If you have any problems at all, then you go to the the lectures or, or Esther in particular, uh, and she will uh, look after you. In regards to exams held at the end of each module, do these also count towards assessment, or is the final assessment based on coursework? It's all coursework, um, unless Esther wants to come in and tell me differently. It is all uh, coursework. Um, I missed the first 20 minutes. Will this information be available after the webinar? You will get a link to this recording. You'll also get all the slides. Uh, they're in the recording, but you have a separate link uh, to all the slides. And you'll get a link to the university website as well, should you want further information. And uh, the, um, the planner is on the Legal Island website. If you go into events on the Legal Island website, you can have a look at that. I think it may also be on the UU one. Um, Esther, this is one for you. If you have a master's in HR, can you apply for credit point exemptions? Uh, well, 
Um, I think that you can, but you would have to show that the you'd have to produce evidence of the modules that you wanted exemptions from. So for instance, uh, I can only speak from experience I used to deliver the employment law modules on uh, uh, an MSc in human resource management. Now, what I would say is that um, the topics are the same on that particular module, and they look the same, but actually, they are covered much more in much more detail on the PG cert and the masters. To to be quite honest with you, um, in the UK and Northern Ireland, there is no other course like this. It is unique, and it is unique because of the amount of information that you get. And I should say about that that it's not delivered in a way that's really dense. This is very interesting. It's like attending uh, an employment law webinar with Legal Island. You know, it's all relevant stuff. It's not really heavy going um, academic material. This is practical stuff that you will have all used in your workplace, that you will have come across. It's very anecdotal, it's very case based. And to that end, we, um, I, I do not prescribe um, books. For instance, because as most of you know, in employment law, certainly in Northern Ireland, is a devolved issue and it's it's slightly different from the from the UK. And whilst we teach um, employment law from a Northern Ireland Republic of Ireland and GB perspective, and we, we give you the different legislation, um, employment law is such a unique area that it's very, very much uh, case law and legislation based. So, for instance, in week two of the programme, you'll have a very detailed uh, library session with our law librarian who takes you through how to look for cases and uh, how to look for legislation through the various databases that you will have access to. Um, and she also takes you through Harvey's on industrial relations, where which is used by all employment law practitioners um, in, in the UK and Northern Ireland. And we take you through all the relevant databases that you need. And whilst that is a is a dedicated session, um, you know, the law librarian remains at your disposal if you need more guidance. And um, so in your module handbooks, you'll also get reference to cases and links that you can look up. But this is a very, very uh, different course. So if you've studied an MSc in human resource management, it may look as if the content is the same, but I can tell you the detail on the PG cert and on the masters is, is much more detail in every single area of employment law that you will come across than is okay. delivered on the MSc. We stop you there, um, Esther, and hopefully we're not getting back on this one. Uh, Catherine, you looked like you were going to come in there, maybe just to point out the difference between the HR studies and, and, and employment law. It's a very different course. You're just going to nod. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you were going to speak there. Oh, sorry, sorry, my microphone was turned off there. Um, no, I did a master's in human resource management, and this is a world away from that, an absolute world away very very different content like certainly with my masters um i did a different uni um and the content in regards to like um employment law was mostly based on uk law rather than Northern irish law so this course in particular has just really augmented the knowledge i learned from that course and that's why I, i'm hoping to go on and do the masters on it as well so it's it's very very different so if, if you're thinking that because you have a master's in human resource management like there's like there is a crossover, but this is just so different, and it really, really helps to have this course in addition to the masters in human resource management. Okay. So I mean, it's so different. Okay, thank you. Uh, that just back up what Esther was saying there, and Catherine before. It, it's it's the practitioners that we use. They're they're nearly mm -hmm. all senior partners in law firms. They're all employment law specialists. Uh, and they, they go into anecdotal um, 
stories and tell you about how they impact and how they deal with clients and so on. It's a it's a very different kind of course. We have a question here for you, Esther. How do you apply for a student loan? Um, uh, you apply through the student loans company. Um, there is details on the if you click into courses uh, in the link that is in the last um, what's still on our screens there. Um, it's in the last slide of the presentation. And um, if you click into that link, there is on the left hand side of the toolbar of the page you click into information on um, fees and payments. If you're a graduate of UU, if you've done any course at UU, then you're entitled to a 10% discount of your fees. Um, but you apply through the student loans company, and that's separate, separate from all universities, in fact. Um, and you just tell them the course that you're doing and the amount that your course costs. Thank you. The next question that we have here, what percentage of the course requires you to be on site? None. It's all online. It's all remote and you get recordings of all the sessions. If you missed the beginning, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be recording a session the week before. Um, whatever week you're on. So the lecture in week three, you'll receive a, a, a video uh, lecture uh, in week two. You watch that and then in week three, you'll have the practical live session with the presenter and the given lawyer, whoever that happens to be, and they'll take you through either a, an exercise and Q&A uh, or problem solving or maybe a mock uh, mediation if it's ALRA. So it's a combination of recorded um, uh, presentation plus a live section q a problem uh, solving issues that we're going to have this particular year but they're all being recorded and you get them all uh, as your resource afterwards is there an exemption for the pg cpd course in employment law and practice delivered by the university i don't know what that is esther but you might i'm not quite sure i understand the question so if you do the PG, so if you Go do on. the pg Sorry, if you do the PG cert and employment law and practice and you then want to go on to do the masters, those credit points are attributed to your masters because those the, the PG cert um, it provides the foundation of the masters in employment law and practice. So if it's a question about do you get exemptions for the PG cert if you do the masters, absolutely, that's part of it. June, what is the attendance requirement of the LLM full time? Um, is any of it attendance uh, other than those additional modules? I think it's just the additional modules. Is yeah, it's the additional modules. Obviously, um, in the first semester, uh, it's a requirement of, of all universities in the UK and Northern Ireland at the minute that all sessions are delivered online. Um, so whether you're studying the PG cert or the LLM, all modules will be online in semester one. In semester two, I can tell you for certain that the employment compliance module, which is the part of the PG cert and the masters, will be delivered um, online. Um, and, and nobody knows as yet uh, whether or not the remaining modules will be delivered online. We'll just, unfortunately, you know, we know as much about this at the minute is, is anybody else in terms of the effect of the pandemic. Final question. Uh, can you confirm again? Um, there we go. Uh, these, these. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass on the last question. Can you confirm again? Sorry, I missed the start. What the attendance is for the certificate full time, and that's 12 weeks effectively in the first semester and 12 weeks in the second semester. And in the first semester, you'll have two um, two lectures, if you like. Uh, you'll have ADR and uh, tribunal uh, in the first set of lectures, if you like, from two to three. And then the second uh, lectures are going to be on employment law um, that Tuesday afternoon. Uh, they're the live sessions that you get as well as the recorded bits. And then in the second semester, there's just the one, it's the employment compliance, uh, 12, 12 lectures there, and you will get a recording plus a live session, a live Q&A with, um, uh, with the lecturers. I'm gonna wrap up there. If there are other questions, you've got Esther's email there. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you to Catherine and Dylan and Esther uh, for all the work there. Uh, we start in September. 
Uh, there's lots of time between now and then to try and make some arrangements. There's details on uh, on loans and everything else. If you want to know more information, you can contact Esther or contact me, uh, and we will deal uh, with those things as well. So until then, thank you very much for watching. You'll get all the stuff. You'll get this recording. You'll get the the, the slides. You'll get everything uh, in the post event uh, email for you. So thanks very much for your interest. Uh, thanks everybody. We'll see you again soon. And if you want to see the next webinar, it's on Friday the seventh with Seamus McGranahan. Any employment law questions you have, send them into Legal Island and we'll deal with them on the first Friday of every month. See you there. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you.